Hello, good morning, it's Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Thursday, the 31st of March, 2016. Okay, interesting morning to say the least, prior to obviously April Fools, so uh, it's an <laughs> interesting day and uh, interesting uh, way to finish the month as well. Okay, so let's try and uh, dissect uh, the uh, the market always, as, as always, from a chronological perspective. US markets yesterday finished more or less flat, uh, potentially to the weaker side. Uh, with regards to the FTSE, uh, European markets this morning are certainly down, uh, which is explained by the Nikkei being down overnight, the Hang Seng being down overnight, the uh, Shanghai just about finishing flat for the day. Okay, so... Um, Certainly weakness uh, was uh, was uh, emanated from the US session, given the fact that oil prices certainly slumped on the back of uh, excessive supply concerns again, with uh, crude uh, stocks uh, certainly coming out larger than expected in terms of the supply constraint, and obviously the uh, OPEC out production certainly increasing due to Iran. Okay, now not only that, we also have obviously a weaker economic data as well, to a large point, a uh, large perspective this morning. Now we have... Um, the German data, retail sales, certainly coming out weaker than expected. So that certainly put a uh, downward uh, pressure on the actual market itself. Uh, also with regards to uh, housing data out overnight from, uh, for, and also business confidence as well from, from New Zealand, certainly came in weaker as well. Uh, private vacancies or job vacancies from, uh, from Australia, certainly weaker as well. Uh, and that certainly put a damper in terms of uh, sentiment. Uh, retail sales month on month certainly came out weaker uh, from Germany's perspective. Uh, we've had uh, consumer spending out of France, certainly the bright spot, certainly stronger than expected there. Inflation data out of uh, Germany, obviously yesterday and today, uh, overall coming out in line, potentially higher, certainly causing a, 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 a causing concern there, given the fact that the monetary policy divergence obviously uh, is certainly uh, uh, is certainly in stark contrast to the US. Now the the Fed, obviously, as we all know is uh, on the uh, path of a uh, dovishly hawkish uh, perspective, given the fact that Yellen uh, totally disagrees with her uh, compadres, and uh, she certainly is uh, towing the dovish line. And that's obviously causing the euro USD to spike, and as we can see here, the euro is currently approaching 1.14, and that's obviously causing risk aversion in European equities. Okay, and that's why we're seeing European equities certainly weaker. On the back of, obviously, weaker oil prices, we've also had a China downgrade this morning. Uh, the S&P certainly has... Uh, highlighted the ongoing debt concerns uh, and also we've had one potential bank uh, default on its bonds so again it certainly is a cause for concern okay in terms of the FTSE 100 we've had uh, GDP come in slightly stronger than expected so certainly impressive there uh, although total business investment certainly comes in negative uh, the um, Mortgage applications came in slightly stronger. Uh, index of services came in slightly stronger as well, although the current account certainly came out worse. So again, that certainly is uh, not good news from a fiscal perspective, especially going into uh, uh, Brexit concerns, okay, in, in terms of June. Now, Eurozone consumer confidence, or should we say CPI, sorry. Uh, Euro retail sales came in weaker than expected. Or should I say that was the, uh, let's confirm that was uh, the Greece. Was it Greece's retail sales? I think that was Greece. Okay, so that's Greece retail sales. Now, in terms of uh, CPI, um, European certainly came in in line, certainly not weaker than expected, but not as uh, strong as everybody expected. We've had job cuts from the US come out just now. Uh, we have uh, continuing jobless claims, uh, Canadian GDP, Chicago PMI, Fed Dudley, Williams and Dudley speaking as well. So that certainly should be interesting in the US session. But from the uh, European perspective, weaker German retail sales, but the uh, German employment certainly came in slightly better than expected. Although there are differing views as, as to whether or not that is uh, actually what uh, everybody's expecting, given the uh, unlimited QE that's in this market. OK, now let's look at the market from a technical perspective. Uh, given the fact that, like I said, we have uh, all, the major uh, risk aversion uh, uh, variable at present is the euro spiking to 1.14, hurting exports, uh, European exports, and obviously destroying the QE trade. Uh, not only that, you also have highlights or concerns with regards to Chinese debt concerns and the uh, banks reporting earnings are certainly coming in weaker as well. OK, so China certainly will be the trigger and euro is a trigger as well for uh, risk aversion trade. OK, be sure to visit Trade Signaler. Uh, you can download the app via uh, Google Play and App Store, Apple's App Store. Uh, it certainly is a, um, a new app that's uh, been created by CFDs.com. 
and that will help pro project uh, my analysis and other uh, analysts um, uh, view on the market uh, via the app okay be sure to download that okay now let's look at the actual markets from an intermark from an intermarket analysis perspective as always but from a uh, uh, technical perspective too so let me just bring up my charts first of all let's start with the euro stocks now the euro stock certainly has a H&S formation in place so keep an eye on the euro stocks H&S formation and that's obviously triggered by the H uh, by the uh, rally in the euro if I go to the daily chart you can clearly see that we have this H&S formation pivot high being 3130 the neckline being uh, 2970 so it's a 160 point drop on the downside so you are looking at 2800 on the downside on the euro stocks now interesting that we have 2750 as gap fill below so certainly watch out for that zone below 60 minute chart you could clearly have a bear flag formation okay so we're looking at a bear flag formation we've closed the gap for now the market is consolidating on the back of obviously a stronger euro and you are looking to potentially test the uh, 2980 and then obviously you have the key got gap fill support levels below and that will be the zone from my perspective that you are looking to potentially target okay you're looking to close that gap at 2970 so watch out for that gap below okay now in terms of the german dax let's bring up the german dax we're in no man land at the moment battle between two gaps obviously weaker retail sales uh, german employment not coming out stronger than expected and therefore one would presume you are looking to potentially close the gap below especially given the fact that the nikkei was weak overnight shanghai was flat hang Seng certainly weak given the weak economic data that came out there in terms of retail sales and you are looking for a flush especially if you add in chinese concerns and adding a stronger euro this certainly doesn't look well or doesn't look very good okay right yeah uh, german dax certainly looking to potentially close below daily chart the german dax bear in mind uh, we certainly seem to be exhausted on this potential thrift or thrust higher and you are looking at potential exhaustion or a potential break as well uh, and looking to potentially move lower from my perspective uh, and looking to potentially close that gap at 9500 so keep an eye on that gap at 9500 for the german dax okay the french cac let's bring up the french cac now we certainly seem to be consolidating sideways in the french crack no real movement or conviction on the daily chart the 60 minute chart certainly exhaustion again uh, again you have this bear flag formation on the back of a stronger euro bear that in mind and you have the unfilled gap below that needs to be closed okay so watch out for that gap below 10 minute chart uh, again you certainly seem to have held double bottom at 4380 whether or not that can hold and sustain itself is it certainly comes into question and the gap at 4360 will be watched very closely you obviously get a coin size with this diagonal um, trend line support the next potential uh, support level is below at 4330 so they are the two zones that you're watching okay let's look at the FTSE 100 now the FTSE 100 certainly has been very interesting if i bring up the daily chart of the FTSE 100 you can see that we broke out of this uh, rising contracting wedge pattern then we retraced retest that level we certainly seem to have found resistance there at this current juncture 60 minute chart again we bounced off to 200 ma on the back of stronger gdp number whether or not that can last is another question and you are looking at a potential uh, bear flag tr scenario looking for a new potential low on the back of weaker oil prices obviously okay and adding chinese concerns again the, them two alone will certainly propel the FTSE 100 lower and don't forget brexit concerns as well that certainly is looming in the background okay now the uh, FTSE itself has bounced off to 200 ma has bounced off previous uh, uh, resistance or previous resistance equals support and uh, it'll be interesting to see how long that lasts okay again bear in mind you do have the unfilled gap at 6 100 so the market will well that's that price that level will certainly act as a magnet and force price action lower okay that certainly is the zone that we're going to watch very very carefully okay uh, in terms of the price of oil let's bring up the price of oil which i've already discussed from uh, from my uh, yesterday's charts that I've posted, you are looking at a similar H&S formation pattern. Adding the fact that you have Chinese concerns, adding the fact that you are now potentially coming into support on the dollar index, again that will hurt the um, the actual uh, commodity sector as well. So H&S formation on the chart of oil, the four-hour chart, as you can see, remains in a, bear, a bearish channel, lower lows, lower highs, and that's exactly what we're looking at. Okay, Euro USD on the daily chart, you are looking at a potential break above here. Uh, your next level you're looking at is 1.1470 on the back of stronger inflation and uh, given the fact that the anti-QE trade certainly is uh, in full motion okay uh, not only that you in terms of copper as well as bring the chart of copper you can see it's overtly weak next potential support is down here at 21 or 2.15 in terms of the dollar index as is bring the dollar index as well and what's interesting actually is the buns let's just bring up the buns as well so 
In terms of the bonds, let's just bring up the bonds. You can clearly see that you have this potential HNS formation in the bonds. Okay, and as we all know, when the bonds fall, then the yields start to move higher. Okay, bear that in mind. Okay, so this is showing you, and this is telling you that the um, the bonds are certainly looking to potentially move lower on this HNS formation on this lower high concept. And uh, a flush in the bonds obviously cause the yields to rise. Yields rise, and the euro will rise along with it. Okay, so. That certainly needs to be considered as well. Okay, now the daily chart of bonds, you can see that we are into that resistance zone, we're failing to uh, surpass that or uh, exceed that uh, double top in, in the bonds. Okay, and hence the reason why you're seeing the euro strength uh, in the, at this current juncture. Okay, right, uh, that's a, a wrap, folks. Be sure uh, to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Uh, the specialists in CFDs and spread betting, uh, be sure to qualify for that 25% cash bonus. And uh, be sure to visit the educational site as well, www.cfds.education to learn more. Goodbye now.